Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, are you gay? It's a trick question, everyone is. <laughs> At least according to this uh, comic. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. There's gay people and there's uh, straight white villains. Male, of course. Um, <laughs> but anyway, this is uh, Patsy Walker, aka Hellcat number 17, the final issue of this run. And uh, uh, some people got confused when I reviewed this a couple, the, the first issue a couple days ago. They thought it was a new book. No, this is like a 2015, 2016 era book. It was canceled before I started my channel. Uh, but I do remember like seeing it on the stands when I got back into, you know, going to comic stores regularly and I was just like, what is this? But before we get started, uh, I, I got back into the habit of doing updates on all of my, you know, uh, Indiegogos. Uh, that are you know still active, haven't shipped yet. So Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar, Spendables Go to Hell, Pandemic Comic Book, and Do As You're Told, The Ballad of No. These last two, Pandemic and Do As You're Told, will be closing in 17 days. Uh, so uh, anyway, um, when I spoke about this on the first one, I talked, I gave this very elaborate analogy of where a place I used to work and there was a oil field, you know, oil industry company and at the gym they would just say like everything oh we went here and there wasn't oil but we went here and we're gonna make an offer but the other company like i don't know what they <laughs> how strong they thought that the bro code was but i was like bruh you're lucky i'm like in a completely different industry like you're just giving away everything but it turns out that this was actually a it was it was a pretty shallow <laughs> you know oil deposit uh i read the first one had a good fun video and then I read the second one, and it was essentially exactly the same. You know, one of the things you need for a video is, even if it's the same type of cringe, use different examples. But So then I read the third issue, and then I jumped ahead a couple, and then a couple more, and then I just said, screw it, I'll just read the last one. Okay, so <laughs> the bad news is, there's actually no real new cringe. Oh, no, there's, there is some new cringe in this, but it's, it, but it's still more of a certain type. And that is um, gay people as pets for the mostly straight lead. Um, uh, but they're all, like every single issue over a year and a half are essentially exactly the same. It's really odd. Uh, so uh, this is the final issue. So of course it is, what is it? It's everyone congratulating each other. For, I, this is a very common trope for um, SJW comics, especially of this era. Uh, the first issue always had the lead being like photographed by a bunch of millennials or Zoomers or whatever. And they'd be like, oh my gosh, like me? Like I'm super famous? Like everyone likes me? Oh my gosh. Um, and then people said, haven't they done this also on Riri Williams? Uh, no, there was like a two year period where every female character got that cover. Everyone adoring them and them just being like fake modest. Uh, the other one, and I'm telling you like, <laughs> there were 17 issues. The first issue was, oh my gosh, like people think I'm amazing? Like how did they know? And then every other uh, cover was, um, <laughs> me and my diverse friends love each other so much. Uh, so this is the final issue and w what is this? It's her playing Wait, is she playing the game? This is a two-player game, so her controls would be over on the left, but she's in the middle, and... You you just executed the kick? I And then you stopped to congratulate... People are, like, insanely happy. I just had to edit out this long, awkward silence I had with myself, because I got to this page and I go... Did I not read this book? Like, I don't remember this page. I don't remember, I kind of, did I skim it? And then I remembered, no, 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 no. Dear heart, <laughs> you read the entire book and almost all of it fell out of your brain within 24 hours. So there was a, uh, a, a subplot set up in the first issue that Patsy used to be in a, an Archie style comic that was written by her mother. Her mother passed away, passed it on to one of the other people in it. And then that person had the rights and was holding the money from Patsy even though that she gave it out to everyone else. So now it sounds like one letter from the lawyer just made it, you know, get, uh, you know, cut loose and that's it. <laughs> this was the major plot for the entire series. It went for a year and a half and then it was just, you know, oh yeah, the lawyer just sent a 
you know, certified letter to her lawyer, and then then it was all over. Uh, so uh, so then it goes into chibi mode, and then they're gonna go shopping. That's it. <laughs> that was it. So then they go. It's time to go shopping. Uh, now I need to emphasize a couple of things. Um, while this book portrays this kind of ebullient, light hair, light-hearted attitude. It is one of the most deeply sad books I have ever read. Uh, I talked about this thing um, uh, that SJWs write like someone who's never had a friend in their entire life thinks having friends is like. And all they know is like Twitter speak, Joss Whedon uh, TV shows, uh, reality shows. So everyone's like catty and bitchy and shallow with each other and they do generic things that come from like 80s and 90s movie montages they're like oh my gosh shopping shopping's like oh my gosh we're fun um the weirdest thing is like and they talk like space aliens so this is the two gays who have never been anything but cartoonish effeminate gays um no one ever no gay man is ever masculine in an sjw uh book um the funny thing is when i grew up the only people you knew, you know, because when I grew up, it was it was a time when everyone, you know, people would hide being gay. So the only people who were out were just like the super flamboyant ones from birth who just couldn't hide it. Everyone else just kind of hid it. So I'm still, you know, I'm still kind of, you know, even at this age, when you, you know, someone will mention that they're gay or bi, you know, a guy. And you're like, but you just, you're just like a regular dude. You're like, yeah, so is all of us. We're all like this. The flamboyant ones are like 0.001%, but it's 100% in SJW books because um, just like when I got, you know, ro roasted by Kwanzaa, he's like, there's no minorities. Uh, and then somebody pointed out that every single character in the Jawbreakers is a minority. And then he basically said words to the effect, well, you can't tell from across the street, you know. <laughs> so you need characters like this that from across, the oh, I wonder if these two super effeminate men are gay. And then... Uh, I have no idea. This is this weird like color thing where SJWs come onto characters and then they change their skin tone. Like Luke Cage, who was traditionally very dark, is now very light skinned. And then Jubilee, <laughs> who's always been, you know, light skinned, is now I thought I thought this was a completely different character dressing up as Jubilee to be ironic. And okay, so Jubilee is a vampire, single mom. Don't 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 ask. That, that, you can't blame this on this book. That that came from the X books. Uh, but uh, anyway, so they're doing the montage, and everyone talks like a space alien, pretending to be a human. That's what I'm talking about. Fashion shouldn't be some strict set of rules about what fabric for which body. It's a form of expression. So express. Uh. It is a lot more fun when you can afford it. I'll say that for free. You earn this, kiddo. Go big or go home. That doesn't sound like a teenager talking to other, you know, young people. Although, again, weirdly enough, they keep doing this thing in SJW books where people in their 20s and 30s hang out with teenagers. Um, uh, it's, it's Minority Justice League. Minority Justice League is the... Uh, it's something that's promulgated in SJW comics. It's that all minorities women, gay people, anyone who's not white. They all are vaguely friends and kind of know each other. And as soon as they're like, oh my gosh, you're black? I'm a woman, like, we have so much in common. <laughs> We're both not straight white guys. Uh, so again, this, you earn this kiddo, go big or go home. That doesn't sound like a teenager or, you know, 20 or whatever age Jubilee's supposed to be. It sounds like someone in their 30s or 40s imagining how kids talk um so then oh gosh so then we're getting some funsy stuff oh look all oh, jeez am i i'm trying to think of like the correct word for this um this, this is specifically for the gay men watching is it insulting <laughs> like i feel like i would be insulted like the 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 men are more feminine than the women. Yes, I know there is a small percentage of gay men who are very feminine, uh, but it's not. So then we get into the plot. 
and oh my gosh, two new characters get introduced. Plot twist, they're lesbians and they love each other. That's it. We get like 10 pages of this torturous imitation Steven Universe art style and humor. We are your worst nightmares, your deepest fears. When we're done with you, all will cower before the legend of the Somnambulisters. Ha ha ha, it's a superhero thing, but it's stupid. That makes it funny because we it's stupid. Then people will do the thing that happens one million times in SJW comics where someone will have a stupid name and then someone will say, that's a stupid name, and they'll say, no, it's not. I think that might have been witty like the first or second time that happened ten years ago. Now it's just excruciating. So then, ha ha ha, the two... Okay, so... This entire book is based around the idea that these uh, two girls are uh, lesbians, but they haven't really admitted it to themselves or each other. And then, uh, but the deal is that they're two female characters in an SJW comic. And they have danger hair. Like, 100% these characters were going to be lesbians. So then they, they sit down and these adults are basically, like, really into the sexuality of these children. Um, so they're like, hey, you're gays, right? You're a couple of gays. You like her. What? Aw, oh, beans. Hey, that's maybe, it's, wow, that's, boy, we moved really quickly to that stranger adult in his late 20s. So then, uh, the, uh, I don't know, gay, the gay Asian guy in his 20s and the gay white guy in his 30s says, uh, now we're going to, now what we're going to do here is take back what you stole. And then, if you're okay with it, Tom and I would like to take you to the, to his bookstore. Um, it's a... <laughs> So uh, these two strangers are gonna are going to uh, teach a twelve year old the gay way. Uh, again, look, this character is basically drawn as if she is a baby. Um, so then we find out that uh, yazies, gazies, harazies, um, and this is the two adult men making goo goo eyes because they're super in duper into the sexuality of a twelve year old and a fourteen year old. And then, uh, ten times darker than she's ever been, Jubilee says, You're a good person, Patsy Walker. You know that, right? This is definitely how humans speak to each other. So then, uh, hugging, crying, and everyone's gay, and the end. <laughs> and I think this man might have tits. Okay, so this is, uh... Well, no, not every straight white man is evil. Uh, Doctor Strange is merely an effeminate uh, man, silly Billy, taking on, uh, you know, trying on hatsies because it's funsy onesies. Um, but yeah, these are all the different characters. Uh, okay, plot twist, everyone's gay. <laughs> a... M. Night Shyamalan, everyone's gay. Um, uh, and uh, that's it. The end. <laughs> I've, I actually invented this uh, uh, concept called gay ping pong. And it's where uh, you just replace every single bit of dialogue with literally just the word gay. Uh, you can add a period or an exclamation point or a, a question mark. You can make it bold or italicized. But this person would just say gay. And then this person would say gay. And then this person would say gay. And then this person in italics would say gay. And this person in bold would say gay. And then this person would say, gay question mark, gay exclamation point. And that would just be, it would, re it would really not fundamentally change the story in any way, shape, or form. So, gay? Gay. 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 Uh, so. <laughs> cool? Okay, so anyway. Uh, Jawbreakers, gay bazaar. The Expendables go to gay. Gay Demic, <laughs> do as you're gay. The ballad of gay. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone. Give it to the GoFundMe, Patreon, and the Indiegogo. You're finding original content and an original lawsuit. Links are in the description, and I will have more new and old comic book reviews up all this week. Thanks. Bye.